Hello and welcome back to Let's Paint in iRacing. This once again is Dave and once again this is the Golf Racing BMW Z4 that we're working on. Uh, so today we're going to learn a couple new things. We're going to learn about how to make curved and stroked lines but before I do any of that I'm just going to go over a little bit of stuff that I did off camera uh, to get this car kind of started and going on. So let's just uh, go right into it. So off camera, I went ahead and I took all of these lines and I put them right on the pixel to make them nice and sharp. I also went ahead and drew some rounded rectangles here, filled out these lines coming up on the sides here. You can see I made a little bit of an attempt to fill it in as it goes across these hood insets here. It looks a little derpy. Uh, I think I'm gonna go change this, I'm not really I'm not really feeling that right now. Uh, I went on the Matthew Nethercoats uh, rough add-ons package. I went ahead and grabbed the WEC package, grabbed the Pro and the WEC uh, number plates off here, tossed them onto the hood there, tossed them onto the side here, uh, on top of the number, and on here. You can see I've, I've roughed in some logos, the Hackett logos, this Pro Drive logo, Michelin's, Golf's stuff on the side this is all pretty basic stuff pretty standard stuff uh, I also went ahead and extended the after I got these roof stripes on like that or the, the hood rather these stripes on the way I like them I went ahead and extended them down onto the the nose of the car so the nose of the car has a tendency to to splay things out so things will come down like this and then get kind of like turned that way so open up the file here can see that I went ahead on the so I basically what I did was I went and I duplicated all of those lines onto onto the nose so I duplicated them off of the, the hood onto the nose and then I went ahead and I just I rotated them all one by one until they fit the rotation and then I did the same thing down here so it came here and then I basically cut it and then I put it down here and rotated them as well you could see these lines right here, these one, two, three, not exactly perfectly lined up with here. Still need to move these around a little bit, but getting there. It's getting there. Uh, what else? I did the same on the roof where I put everything on the pixel and I drew this little piece in right here. Right here. Let me turn the wireframe on. Right, just along this curve here, you can see there's a little. Uh, there's a little mark that goes along here, and I just followed that to fill this piece on the roof line in. Uh, same thing on the sides. I went ahead and I just moved everything onto the pixel, tossed in some logos, saw the badges already. I grabbed these, uh, these uh, number position light deal things. Uh, that are common in the old ALMS, and I think they use them in the old WEC as well. I may be wrong. Don't don't get don't get angry if I'm wrong about that. But I grabbed them off of the rough template. I popped them on here. They fit perfectly. Didn't have to resize them or anything. And then I added the the streaks onto that. Uh, I also continued the. So you can see also I put some sponsors on here and here. I'll talk about what I did with this one in a minute. Uh, I continued the stripes from the roof down onto the trunk. Okay, so the stripes are actually different, so I grabbed these off the rough, put them on the on the pixel, and then continued them. If you looked on the thread, you saw that I continued them all the way down to the bottom of the car, and this is just because I didn't know exactly how I wanted this to look, so I went overboard first and then trimmed it back after without the other way around, and then I went and rounded all these corners off, and this is one of these situations where there's uh, more than one way to skin a cat. I could have redrawn all of these as, as rounded rectangles, and that would have been fine. Uh, but I got a little bit lazy, so I decided not to do that. What I did instead was I took the original lines that I was working with, which looked like this, okay? Because they came, these lines came straight all the way down. And then I just went ahead and threw a mask on and painted on here with a brush. And then I just went in here and drew a circle from line to line to basically just round that edge off. You can hear it, see here the circle. So just to be lazy, just a quick and lazy way, I mean the proper way would have been to just go in and, and draw a real rounded rectangle all the way around here with a nice curved edge, but 
I don't know, I was a little bit lazy. And then I did the same thing here and all down here. Threw some logos on the back. You can see Michelin's and, and stuff that I... I think I nabbed these off of the Corvette or the Porsche. I don't remember. Or, sorry, Rough. I don't quite remember. Uh, let's see, what else? Right, so these intercontinental uh, logos here and here. I couldn't find the intercontinental that I wanted, which would basically look like this. Uh, it was either, you know, the logos on top or the side, and I was feeling lazy and I didn't want to size and move stuff around. So I went ahead and I found this intercontinental logo, which is pretty high resolution. Went in there, I pulled the intercontinental out, you know, with the magic wand, it's pretty standard stuff. And then I found that the, the text for the intercontinental wasn't strong enough. If the real car, this is actually very bolded. And in this car, lots of layers already. Uh, let's look at the wing. Okay, it looked like this, right? It's very not bold. So it's not really what I wanted. So I went ahead and I took the layer. Okay, it looked like this. I false color, I did a color overlay on it to make it white. I duplicated it and then I went ahead and and uh, put a mask on it to basically mask off everything except this area here, as you can see. Then I went ahead and I just dropped a, a one pixel stroke. Right, so in the end, it just strokes the intercontinental. If I turn the mask off, you see now it strokes this. So just to make the text a little brighter, but not touch the actual logo. Uh, what else? What else did I do? Oh, right. I also put in some trim pieces here. You can see I threw some logos on and I put some carbon fiber texture on it. See, I actually, so this is basically just uh, drawn with the pen. There's, oops, drawn with the pen. There's a natural seam you can see right here where you can draw this, where there's actually, there's two separate pieces on the template. I actually nabbed this one of one off one of the other cars I drew. I don't remember which one. But basically, it's just a, a line that's driven, uh, that's driven, that's drawn through here, through this little gap. And then I went ahead and I, I threw a, a carbon fiber overlay on it. But, let me turn the wireframe off so you can see this better. But I found that, uh, where is it? But I found that it, uh, found that it looked a little plain just throwing the carbon fiber texture on. So this is actually, a, uh, I wouldn't say a technique or a little trick that I, I figured out by looking at some of uh, Frederick's paints. He had a paint that, I forgot which car it was off the top of my head, that had a, the carbon fiber trim piece. And I looked, and I was always just captivated by it. So I was looking at it a little more closely and I, I saw exactly what he did to make it really pop up and stand, stand out and that's basically what, what I did here. As you can see here, it's got a little bit of depth here. You can, it looks like it's curving out here and, and in here. So it actually looks like, you know, it looks like a piece of trim, not just a flat piece. And so basically all I did was I took this piece of trim here, okay, opened up the effects option. I dropped a, a little bit, a, a multiply, a, a shadow, which goes straight up. So this just, if, you, if you're looking at the piece right above here on the blue, you can see it just gives a little bit of a shadow right here. So it's pretty mild, one pixel distance, one pixel size, low opacity, about 50% set to multiply. And that kind of rounds this edge in. And then I went ahead and I dropped an inner shadow. This goes the opposite way, going in. So it's set to screen to make it brighter and white, again with low opacity, with a relatively high distance and size to give it a little bit more spread. And you can see it, it kind of rounds that edge out. Cancel, let's undo that. So it kind of rounds this edge out and gives it a little bit more depth. So I can't take credit for that. I got figured this out by looking at, uh, at Frederick's paints. It was a really cool idea. Uh, I also went ahead and made a number plate here. I, so you can see that here. I couldn't find this number plate just as is, uh, which is the number plate that was in the 2013 GT cars, or at least this particular car. But the best I could find 
for this number plate was this picture. Okay, so what I did, and this doesn't work if you look at the if you look at the colors here, right? You, there's a lot of color coming in here, so I can't just grab this piece and paste it underneath. So what I did was I just went in here. Uh, I took this area here. That's just the that's just the 24 hours of Le Mans 90, 90 years here. Cut that out, and I found that you know the black over here wasn't too too bright that it was unable to work with. Pasted that on a pasted that on a uh, a new image like this, uh, and then I needed to get this 22nd to 23rd of June piece out. So I went, I looked around on the net, and I found another another poster. So I basically just took this poster, went in with the magic wand like this, and then just copied out the copied out this stuff. And then pasted it in like that, and it looked really crappy because when you copy it out, you get all of this, all of this junk around it. It's not a good selection, but that didn't matter because what I wanted to do was basically put an overlay on it. So what I did was a, a gradient overlay instead of regular color overlay. So I just picked my gradient. You click on here, and then basically I just picked this color here, which is the start of the gradient, and I picked a color up near the near the top see like up here and then I picked the bottom of the gradient which is I picked the color down here at the bottom and then I put a nice little gradient on here and I popped it down here cropped it out all right put it through a stroke inner stroke on it and made that badge there so that's the work I've done off camera so next what we're gonna do is go over some new stuff so curvy lines and Maybe a few other things with respect to using strokes and brushes. We'll see how far we get and how much time we have. But I'm going to take a quick break, which you guys won't notice, and I'll be right back. Okay, and I'm back. Sorry, I had to take a little bit longer break than I expected to, but let's get right back into it. So, we need to go ahead and draw these curvy lines now. So we're going to use a new technique to do this. And this technique involves using paths and strokes, which is something that we haven't been using yet. So, I have my file open here, and picture of the force car. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this, this blue guy first, and then the orange guy, and then this light blue guy in underneath. And then the rest around that, because this seems to be the most uh, key line, because it intersects with this this line here and then the rest can just branch off of that so what I'm thinking here it is is this line's gonna come down along the hood edge like that right just like but because this car is a little bit different shape and it come in this car comes in around the headlight but the headlights are shaped a lot different on this car right and I don't want to bring it down like this because I want other lines to come here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it down like this I think and then bring it in at the bottom which is gonna be tough because this is actually over two pieces so this is gonna be this is gonna be interesting so let's just let's just start getting into it and and, and see what we can make of it so first things first I made a new layer group nothing special here I called it right side curvy stripes for lack of a better name and in there I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer and I call it the blue hood stripe I guess seems a fitting name as any so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something kind of new but not really new so what we're gonna do is on this layers channels and paths we're gonna open up the paths option and you might have stuff in here you might not it doesn't really matter so paths are basically they're basically the same thing as shapes except they don't actually you don't actually draw on the image what you're doing is you just draw a vector and then you can make selections from that vector and do other interesting things with that vector so what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and make a new path right here the same way we make a new layer it makes a path and if this path is selected everything you do with the pen will be working on this path rather than on the on the uh on the actual uh, canvas. So you can see I'm drawing an arc here and it's not filling it in with the foreground color which is this blue because I'm drawing on the path. Okay, so let me actually just go in, okay, metallics are off. 
just so I can pull the colors easier. So I'll grab this blue color. And I think the best way of doing this is to go ahead and just draw this line. So I think it's this, see this line here? I basically want to follow this line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trace this line and then I'm just gonna move it down. So let's just, let's just trace this line like so. And remember, I wanted it to come in. So I want it to come in. I want it to come down like right in right in the middle of this line here and then come in about in the middle of this one. So I think this point right here, the two, so there's a eh, triangles and then double line and then one, two. So like that, but I'm too far back. So I need to bring it back about half the thing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna, I'm gonna make it go a little bit beyond as well, like that. And I'm gonna make it go a little bit beyond here, like that. Okay, so we have a path with a curve now marked out. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this path and I'm gonna bring it down just with the arrow key. I'm gonna select it and then go to free transform, control T, can I not? There we go. Control T to free transform. And I'm just going to nudge it down until it hits the marks I like. Now what we're going to do is obviously we can't use this, this path like this because there's nothing here. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw a stroke on top of this path. So there's two, there's two ways that you can go about doing this. I'll show you both ways. I personally have a favorite way of doing it and I'll probably end up doing it that way, but you guys can go ahead and stroke it any way you want. You don't have to listen to me. So let's just go through the two ways. So basically what the stroke does is it takes whatever you have in the brush, in your brush options here or pencil options, and then just traces along the line like that. So I'm going to use the brush. And you can open up the, the brushes if you go Windows and then you go to Brush right here. Also, you can, if you have the sidebar here, it's this little button here, it looks like little brushes. Or if you have the brush selected on the canvas and you right click, you can open up a, a kind of quick brush selection thing here. And you can quickly change the size and, and other brushes like that. But this is a more detailed uh, brush. Go away. Go away. This is a more detailed brush. It's got all sorts of other interesting options in here. I'm not going to go over this stuff this episode but I will be talking about using shape dynamics and scattering and things like that. Uh, another one, I forgot where it is off the top of my head. There's a fade option as well, which I'll talk about, not this episode, a different episode. But anyway, what you need to know for this is all you need to do is, is change your brush size. So this line that come, oh, here it is, this guy here, is about the same thickness if you look really closely, it's maybe a little bit thinner than this this one here, this middle line here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush. You can roll the mouse wheel to change the brush shape you can see, or the size rather. So I'm going to just take the brush and just rough the size in. So like that, five pixels maybe six pixels. So we have our breath set now to be the thickness we want it to be. All we have to do now is select the layer we want to we want to put the stripe on. So this this is going to be a rastered stripe it makes. It's going to be pixels. It's not going to be a vector. You go on pass, you right click, you hit so you can see the options here. You can duplicate delete, you can make a selection along the path, you can fill it which works good if it's a shape or you can stroke it. And we're going to stroke it it's going to ask, what do you want to stroke it with? So obviously we want to use the brush. We hit OK. And we stroke the patch, path. You have to be careful because your options here makes a difference. So you, this is a, a fairly sharp path or a fairly sharp stroke. Not so great, which is why I don't like doing it particularly like this. It's not super sharp. You can see it's got a little bit of a, a blur on it. But if you, let me undo this. If you take your bro brush and, for example, set the, the hardness down and do it again, you can see, right, 
it's even more blurry and if you go even more or pick something like this stroke it again right it's gonna be really blurry so it does basically whatever you have in the brush options even if you pick some crazy crazy ass brush like I have a bunch of brushes here let's this is some weird smoke brush right you stroke the path right and it's gonna stroke it with that smoke brush okay so this is one way of doing it the other way of doing it that I personally prefer is that you go in here you set your brush down to one pixel you right click you stroke the path okay any color doesn't matter which color then you come in here you do a color overlay on it which put it with whatever color you want it to be which in this case it just happens to be the the same color and then you put another stroke on top of that and you pick that color to be the same color and then you can change the size however you want if you want to be really thin you can go like this or even no stroke all right, or you can go thicker, maybe something like that. And if you look, you go like that, you can see the the difference. I find this actually gives a lot sharper. So this is what it looked like before, all right? And then you can see what it looks like after. It's a lot more crisp. Okay, and this is why I prefer doing like this. Obviously, you're gonna run into problems if you go really crazy with this. If you like, if you blast this, oh, geez, just maybe too much. If you blast the stroke up really big, you might end up with all sorts of really janky looking stuff on the edges. So don't, you can do this method, don't really go overboard with it, but it works really well if you wanna do strokes, you know, three, even up to like, you know, 20, 30 pixels. You just might need to clean up the ends after. So that is, that's using, uh, paths a little bit and using strokes so what I'm gonna do now is finish up the rest of this I might have to adjust some of this stuff later because it's coming really close to these lines and there's other stuff that needs to go here <coughs> excuse me but I'm not I'm not so concerned about right right now because this is you know just grabbing this stuff and moving it back not too much of a problem so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and play with this stroke a little bit maybe I don't really like how much it comes in do the rest of the car or not the rest of the car the rest of the strokes at least coming along from the, this piece here and the stuff over here on camera and I'm going to do that hmm yeah I really need to change this anyway so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do all of this in about the same amount of time it takes to play the opening riff from Yakety Sax. And uh, I'll end the episode there. And next episode, I'll have the rest of these, these strokes done. And we'll talk a little bit about smart objects and shapes. So I'll stop talking. I'm going to cue the music. And I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>